Wow, that was a lovely singing session. We welcome you back to continue staying with us on this great program. One thing I like telling my friends is, Itakuwa ni aibu, kuimba kwa ya zote, alafu ukose, hilea binguni. So as we keep on singing and doing all these things, remember heaven is the goal. At this time, we want to uh, usher in the divine hour, and so I'm going to ask the choristers to lead us in the doxology, after which we will have a prayer by Pastor Alfred Marundu. Stay tuned. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Pray, Almighty God and Father in heaven, we thank you for loving us so much that you send your son. And every day and night you keep on warning us so that we can be prepared for your soon return. We pray that, Lord, at this time that you are sealing your people, you may seal every viewer and every listener to this message. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We welcome you again to this second song service and we'll sing a couple of hymns in Swahili. Uh when I cast well. No. Nimbo nabari miamodia sitin ni watakatifu kishemi. In English it's what he says. First of all, do you like this song and what do you have to say about it? Hakika na upendo yumbo hu ko sababu ukipata ataki mantiki yani ina ujumbe ambao wana to fasa na katika kizazi chetu na wakazi wata dunia hasak kulingana na matukio yote yanayoendelea katika, katika dunia lakini ila pia ukiangalia kimuziki na mipigo na rithimu ambayo ni mizuri sana kwamba naweza kuichanganya na nyimbo nyingine kama hata haleluya chorus ambayo iliandikwa na handle na natumai kwamba sote tutabarikiwa pamoja tukiendelea katika ibada hii tafadhali tuanzishie Oh, 
to be from Nyumbo za Kristo, Shutaimba Nambari, Miyamoja, Sabini, Namoja. Nyumbo enyewe yaitu wakukumu. In English, for the viewers who are following from the uh, Seventh-day Adventist hymnal, is The Judgment Has Set. Kasma, please. Ime anzishwa Tu 
The next song is from Seven Day Adventist Hymnal. We're singing the song number 260. Hover, O me, Holy Spirit. Kasman, I think how we want to do this is just very softly mm. to the end. Okay. No drama, just praying that the Holy Spirit is going to hover over us. Amen.
Thank you very much, dear viewer, for staying with us right here on Hope Channel Kenya. And for those who've just joined us, feel at home, feel at church as we worship the Lord together. And you can call your friends, neighbors, tell them to tune in, tune in on Facebook or on Hope Channel Kenya. We'll be glad to worship together. At this juncture, it's time for prayers. Kwa Kiswahili, huwa tunaimba wimbo amba unasema saheri ya sala. And one of the, uh, my most favorite quotes about prayer is one that says that prayer is the key in the hand of faith that opens heaven's storehouses for us. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but lifts us up to him. And to lift us up to God in prayer today is our pastor Tobias Juma and Grace. Stay tuned. Hello viewer, wherever you are following us from, as my sister mentioned, welcome to our prayer session. My name is Pastor Tobias Juma. Shall we humble ourselves for a word of prayer? Eternal Father, our Redeemer and our Creator, we come before thee, Lord, in this Holy Sabbath to thank you, Lord, and to exalt your name because of whom you are and also what you've done in the lives of your children. We thank you, Father, for walking with us amidst trials and temptation the world has brought forth. Father, we believe that though we walk in this time and age, when every soul is worried about his fate of tomorrow, Father, we believe that you are still our anchor. We believe, Lord, you are still our Savior. Stand with us, Lord, in such a time. May we see you, Jesus, the Son of God, in our lives. Father, in this particular juncture, we want to remember your children who are suffering in the four corners of the world because of any other ailment in their lives. Father, we pray that touch their lives and bring hope in their souls. Jesus, the Son of God, we want to remember your children in the four corners of the world that because of this pandemic, COVID-19, they've lost their jobs. Father, we want to remember them this hour that stand with them, our Redeemer. You are a God who provides. Provide for them, Lord, even the years and months they've lost without them being paid because you are a true God. Oh Lord in heaven, we want to remember the widows and the widowers. In this time and age, when they don't have any shoulder to lean on, Redeemer, give us your shoulder to lean upon. We thank you, Jesus, for hearing us. We thank you, Lord, for standing with us. And Lord, we hope that though we walk and we are at Mara, we are sure that very soon we shall reach Elim. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, the Son of God, for always willing to understand us and willing to, un to accept and answer our prayer. This, our Lord, we pray that if it's your will, may you bring an end to this COVID-19. But Lord, until then, walk with us. Give us grace to sojourn. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. And thank you, Jesus, for answering our prayers according to our richness in glory. For we plead in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Welcome to the prayer session. My name is Grace Awar. Let's have a word of prayer. Devalasting Father, the Kate of Heaven and Earth, we come before this particular moment. Devalasting Father. There is none like everlasting Father. I pray for all people in this world, everlasting Father. I pray for our church members, everlasting Father. I pray for our pastors, for our elders and their families, everlasting Father. I pray to the children who are at home at this moment, everlasting Father. I pray for the all candidates who are going to sit for exams this year, everlasting Father. I know, th we are, I know that we are going through a lot of challenges at this time, Everlasting Father. 
but you are the protector and you are the guide everlasting father. May you guide us at this particular moment everlasting father until the end. In the same firm belief. Amen. My name is Jaden Abuto and I'm from Laksama Central. Let me begin in the prayer. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, I come before this day. We thank you for the gift of life that you have given unto us, dear Father. Dear Father, even as I say, the children summon, dear Father. May you bid me, dear Father, for it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Today, the title of our children's sermon is Elijah and the Drought. It comes from the book of First Kings, from chapter 17, from verse 1 to verse 16. It began when, when King Ahab and Queen Elizabeth were worshipping idols. Eli, the God became, God became angry and wanted to. God became angry and sent Elijah to say that there'll be no rainfall for three and a half years. Immediately, Elijah went and told the king. The king became furious and wanted to kill him. The Lord told Elijah to go and hide by the brook of Cherith. There he'll drink water, and ravens will come to bring him food. Can we imagine ravens bringing you food, and they can't even cook? Neither can they talk. Let's imagine that. Immediately, the ravens were were bringing him food after some time, the, the brook of Cherith dried up. Then the Lord told Elijah to go to Zarephath and he'll find a widow who will feed him. Immediately he arrived at the gate, he found a widow gathering firewood. He asked for water. When the widow was going to get him water, he also asked for a slice of bread. The widow told him that she didn't have any, but she had which would feed her and her child. Then, then the widow, then Elijah told him to just obey and bring a slice of bread for him. Then the rest she'll eat with her son. And the widow obeyed. Elijah told her that if she obeyed, her oil and flour will never run out. Then she did as she was told. This story teaches us that we should learn to share with other people. We should always be kind, and we should also know that God is with us. Even during this coronavirus pandemic, we should know that God is there, and we should share the word of God to others. Amen? Let's take a closing prayer. Everlasting Father, I come before this day. Thank you for the gift of life that you have given unto us, dear Father. Dear Father, even as we break from the children, someone, dear Father, we will be thus, dear Father, even as we go out there, dear Father. For it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Ni wakati wa zaka na sadaka. Kwa kawaida, tumezoea shemasi kutusaidia katika huduma hii, lakini kwa sababu ya janga mbalo tunapitia, tunasimu zetu za rununu. We want to have our tithes and offerings, and uh, because of the current situation which we are having, we encourage you to use the various platforms that your church leaders have told you, the various pay bills to continue to give to the work of God. And uh, as we give, ningependa kusoma neno kutoka kitabu cha Luka, Sita, mstari wake wa thelathini na nani. Neno la buwana la sema hivi. Wapeni watu vitu, nanyi mtapewa. Kipimo cha kuja na kushindiliwa. Na kusukwa sukwa hata kumwagika. Ndicho watu watakacho wapa vifuani mwenu. Kwa kuwa kipimo kile kile mpimacho, ndicho mtakacho pimiwa. May God bless you as you continue to worship through giving. My name is Michael Mugambi, and I'm going to be reading the key verse today. The verse comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13. And it says, In him you also, who have believed, who have heard the word of truth, and the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, 
was sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, uh, we come before you this, uh, this time uh, seeking your guidance and um, presence uh, as, we, as we head to the sermon. Uh, bless this, the speaker and speak through him. Uh, bring the Holy Spirit to us and let us receive your word in full understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our opening song is Song 614. The title is Sound the Battle Cry. Christ is Captain, the Mighty Throne. Happy Sabbath, my viewer and uh, listener, wherever you are this Sabbath. I want to first of all thank uh, those the choristers, those who have participated in telling the children's sermon, and for all of you, wherever you are, as we all take part today in this Sabbath message. Our sign language interpreter is Sister Anne Mwenesi. I want to welcome you to the message today which is entitled, Ed Time Sealing. Do you have gone sealing? As the key text was read to us, I want again to read the same text. And this is the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. I'm reading from the New International Version. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. To begin our message, I want to invite you that we may pray. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord and our Father, because you love us so much that you would want to seal us. And it's your desire to have everyone who is a submissive believer to be sealed at this end time in preparation for Christ's second coming. We pray that, Lord, every viewer, wherever he is or she is, that, Lord, you may seal them 
and prepare them much for the soon return, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you, the you here refers to you, my listener. The NIV is close to the original Bible, the Greek version. It says, and you also were included in Christ. You here refers to you and I. You were included in Christ, but how and when were you included in Christ? The text here is so descriptive that it tells from just the same verse the how and when we were included in Christ. You were included in Christ when you heard the gospel of your salvation. When you heard the word of truth, you were included in Christ. And that is precisely to say that uh, through your faith in Christ, it was not in vain. It was not futile. It was not hopeless when you believed in Christ Jesus. It was not ineffective. Why? Because you were included in Christ. You got full incorporated into the community of believers and into the body of Christ Jesus. You, my brother and my sister, you are included in Christ because of having believed the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. But a distinction must be made here. The merely healing of the word of God, the gospel of Christ, and the healing of faith. The healing of faith which brings salvation. Healing of faith leads us to salvation and liberation from sin and from the bondage of sin. Because of this now healing of yours, you are united in Christ Jesus. That's why the message is saying you also, having believed, you were included in Christ Jesus. Now, our focus today is on you, my brother and my sister, my viewer. You and I, having believed, you are marked in him with a seal. Because of believing Jesus Christ, you got marked with a seal. Now, this is introducing us to another subject of a seal. So, what is a seal? Two things may be called a seal. The instrument that is used for stamping a mark, what you use to stamp a mark, can be called a seal, or the mark itself. That can be a seal. Here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, at this point in history, the Lord is in the business of marking and sealing his people. And this is a special sealing. It's a spiritual process which is invisible to any human eye. But the point is this. The process and the business of sealing God's people is ongoing, is underway, and will be finished soon. So my viewer, wherever you are, the sealing is going on. It is underway and will be finished very soon. You too and I, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and which now you believed, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. If you are not, then you must be sealed because this is the time the Lord, our Father, is in the business of sending the heavenly host to seal the people who are ready for Christ's soon return. But another question comes to my mind. Why? Why this sealing? Why is God sealing his people at this time in history? How is this sealing done? These are important questions. What time is this sealing? At what time will God be sealing me? Will he be sealing you? At what age is one sealed? When does this process stop? 
this process which is ongoing, the spiritual process of seeding God's people, when we read to stop? I want to come up with a few answers, and I want to begin by saying that the seeding will be finished soon at the cross of provision. If it is not at the cross of provision, then it may be another time in history. But something is important here to note. The sealing is individual. It is done to individual Christians. Sealing being for each one of us on the day of conversion is when all of us began to be sealed. You are sealing my brother and my sister began from the day of conversion. And it may continue. Maybe the Lord will visit with you after your conversion, after your baptism. He can come and seal you even after 10 years of your believing in him. And it ends for each Christian at the cross of provision. Or it may end at your death. You may not know the day that you will die. But if you happen to die tomorrow, then that marks the end of you having been sealed. All at the investigative judgment. We may not have enough time now to di discuss and address the subjects of the investigative judgment. Now, this sealing business is accomplished by the Holy Spirit and the angels of God. Even as the Holy Spirit and the angels of God to do the sealing. It consists of writing the principles of the divine law. It consists of writing the principles, what you learn from the Bible. That is what the sealing consists all about. But more specifically, it also includes the fourth commandment in the life of every submissive believer of Christ. But how is this event of God going on currently? How is this sitting work going on as we speak today? A very, very clear and descriptive passage that I want us to read is from the book of Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. And I want to read from the King James Version. The book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. Open your Bible wherever you are. New King James Version. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, having the four, holding the four winds of the earth. This is so descriptive. That John is saying he saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, east, west, north, south. The angels were standing, and they were holding the four corners of the earth, and they were holding the four winds of the earth. That the wind should not blow on the earth, that the wind should not blow on the sea or on any tree. Verse 2. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east. So descriptive. Four angels, then they were from every corner of the earth. You know the compass, east, west, north, south. And then it comes now, another angel also flying, and he came as, uh, ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. This now brings us about our topic today, end time sealing. This angel from the east was having the seal of the living God. And he cried in a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. Ebu niseme kwa ruga ya kisoili. Joanna anasema kaona malaika wane ambao walikuwa katika pembe zote ine za urimwengu ambao wameshikiria upepo katika pembe zote za ulimwengu na ndipo sasa malaika mwingine anatokea from the east na anasema akaongea kwa sauti kubwa akisema ngojea 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 na huyu malaika anasemekana alikuwa na muhuli wa Mungu aliye hai 
huyu malaika aliyokuwa ametokea east akija kuongea na malaika wale wanne verse 3 now says that what the message that this angel hand to the four angels who are holding and standing on the four corners of the hearth and this is the message in verse 3 do not harm the hearth do not harm the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of God on their forehand. The message is before these angels could release the plagues, this other angel of us too as a message of sealing God's people before that point in history, before now the four angels can react with what they hand. And verse 4 says, and I hand the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. That's another subject which can be discussed another time, but the message is very clear. This seal of the living God is placed on the forehead of God's people. And therefore, we have to grow some interest to know what is this sealing business all about? Who can read it for us, this seal? Now, you need to notice that the mark or the seal, only angels of God and the Holy Spirit can read it. No human high can read it. Therefore, this sealing is not any seal or any mark that can be seen. Because you cannot see the angels, you cannot see the Holy Spirit, and these are the, one, the agents, the ones making the mark and the seal on God's people at this time in history. And the process is ongoing. From the day that you heard this message and you came to Christ, the message of sealing began. What I may not tell you, my brother, and what you may not know is when God will visit with you to come and seal you and prepare you for your soon return. So what is it? What is this ceiling? Just as we cannot see the Holy Spirit, just as we cannot see the holy angels in the human eyes, those who are sealed and those who are not sealed, wherever they are, if you meet them in town, if you meet them in the villages, you may not tell who is sealed. All of them and all of us will look the same in our own eyes. But in the eyes of the angels of heaven, in the eyes of the Holy Spirit, who is doing the sealing, he can tell, here is my servant who is sealed. Because they are doing the sealing and the process is ongoing. You may be in church, you may be outside church, but you can be visited for sealing any time because God is doing his work of sealing at this time. We all look the same. I want to liken it with the parable of Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13, where we have the wise and the foolish virgins. If the ten of them were brought to you, you could not tell and distinguish who were wise and who were foolish. They all looked alike until that time when it was now the point of telling who were ready for the master, for the wedding celebration and the banquet. That is the time we were able to tell who were these who were foolish and who were wise. So today too, this seal, heaven can lead this special seal because it is heaven doing the sealing on the people. But what is that sealing? What is this seal that God so desires to place on his people before the cross of history of this planet? It is his people's settling on the truth. This sealing is nothing but the settling on the truth. A settling on the truth both intellectually and spiritually into the truth. Remember the words of Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. 
What we learn from the Bible is all about Jesus, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Jesus foretold and him now coming in the New Testament times. Brothers and sisters, no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus declared that he is the way, he is the truth and the life. And therefore, it will be the settling of truth intellectually, spiritually. So do you take time to stand God's word? Do you take time to grow your relationship with the truth who is Jesus Christ himself? That is all you need. Why is this sealing being done today at this time in history? So that every true Christian cannot be moved at the trial time, at the shaking time, at the moment when we are coming to the end of this world history, when we come to more plagues and troubles in this planet, God would want his people to be strong. Shaking times are coming at the end of us. It's just a few weeks now or months when the COVID-19 came, and you can see how it has shaken the whole world. But this is not the last plague, and I'm not just praying that more plagues come, but many and many more pandemics will be coming. Pestilences, the locusts were there and they are still here. We are talking of lands in many parts of this country, landslides. We are talking of these things as warning and signs to tell us that this is not our world. So my brother and my sister, wherever you are, how do you fare in this trying moments. How do you fare when you are tried, when temptations come in your life? How will you fare in the end time trials which are coming? You can just see the signals. We are living in those last days of world history. And therefore I come back to our subject again of the sealing. So what is the seal of God now? When we refer to the seal of God, the sealing instrument is the law of God. And where I want to qualify, when I say the law of God, I mean the whole Bible, the whole law of God. This is the message that the God brought to us, is what? This is the law. And God himself took part to write the Ten Commandments with his finger on the tablets of stone. But the prophets were inspired too to bring this message of the Holy Bible to us. And especially the fourth commandment, because it is the commandment that bears the inscription of lawgiver's name. It is only the fourth commandment that has its title and authority. And that's why I want to insist, even on the fourth commandment, in the sealing process, this will be evident to those who will be sealed. Now, this sealing accomplishes four objectives. The sealing work that God so desires for his people is there to accomplish four objectives. The why sealing is why I'm talking about it. Why sealing? Now, sealing fixes in the life of true Christians the principles of God's law. It is only there. That is settling of, on the truth. It is only there so that it will be there to fix in your life, in my life, every true Christian, the principles of God's law. We have ten commandments that God wrote in his, with his finger. Then we have also what he used the prophets to write from Genesis to the book of Revelation. The other objective, it makes faithful Sabbath of, of servants possible for those Christians who are sealed. Remember, a time will come when these Bibles will be taken from us, when persecution will come. But uh, what will happen is that you will all end up developed now the character of keeping the Sabbath. When you meet apostasy, you are able to tell this is to distinguish the right from the wrong. You will be able to stand firm at that time when trials come. So are you able to stand when you are shaken? When you see and becoming things even in church today? 
Are you able to stand firm as a Christian? Only those who are assailed, those who have settled on the truth, are able to stand. Apostasy are able to stand firm on the truth and say this is right and this is wrong. And because now the fourth commandment is the only one of all the ten commandments in which are found both the name and the title of the lawgiver, it is the only one that shows by whose authority the law is given. This means at this time in one history, as we continue to await for the Lord Jesus Christ to come, it will be a time to distinguish between, uh, between the true Sabbath and the counterfeit, the, the, the false Sabbath. That is what we will tell, the fake Sabbath and the true Sabbath. And that's the only way to distinguish God's people. You may be going to church today, even on Saturday, but not be faithful Sabbath of Sabbath, not be faithful Sabbath keeper. And remember, this is part of the sealing, God's law, and specifically the true Sabbath from the fake and the counterfeit Sabbaths. The other objective, number three, is that sealing prepares true Christians, submissive Christians, to pass unharmed through the times of trouble. When the shaking is done, wherever you are, you will only be able to stand firm if you are a sealed. It prepares you for hard times ahead of you. It, you. it prepares you to pass unharmed through a life above sin because God is with you. The fourth objective is that sealing preserves true Christians from the final destruction. It preserves them in the time of crisis. And therefore sealing is crucial for you and for me at this point in your Christian mm -hmm. journey as we wait for Christ to come a second time. And therefore, my viewer, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the sealing of God, I want to specify, is the definite settling of a human being into the truth, Jesus Christ himself, and the permanent fixing of the law of God in your life. That is the ceiling. Now, when is this ceiling done? When is this ceiling done? At what hinge are we sealed? I want to qualify that it is in progress. The ceiling is ongoing. And my sister and my brother, wherever you are, when you see and hear of Ebola epidemic, when now you are witnessing the world pandemic of the coronavirus, when you see pestilences all aloud, France and other calamities, this is only God warning us that we need to be prepared because you may not know when God will pass by to seal you. It is time for you to be prepared because the angels of God are passing and sealing his people. The Holy Spirit is sealing people, and he is sealing them at work. You may be in your place of work, and God will pass there and seal you. You may be, may be traveling by air, sea, or land, and you may not know when God will visit and seal you. Maybe it will be during the day for you all at night. You may be in town or in the villages, but I may not tell you what day and what hour the Lord will be visiting to seal you. And again, all people are being sealed at this point. The children are being sealed. The parents are being sealed. The grandparents are being sealed. Both young and adults are being sealed. God is in the business of sealing people. Do you have the seal of God? Pastors are being sealed. The late are being sealed. Both blacks and whites are being sealed. Are you sealed? But I have this question to pose to you, my viewer, wherever you are. Will God, the Holy Spirit, seal you in hatred? 
Maybe you don't live well you are with your neighbor. Will God, the Holy Spirit, and his angels seal you in your tribal cocoons? Will God, the Holy Spirit, seal us when fighting in church, when you are fighting as church? Is that how God is going to seal us? Will God seal us in any life of sin? We ought to understand our times. The sealing of God's people will, conti will not continue indefinitely, my brother and my sister. There will come a time when God will stop sealing his people. It will not continue forever. And let me go to the pen of inspiration, and I want to quote the book of early writings. The early writings, page 58. And this is what the messenger, Ellen G. White, and to say. I'm reading just a paragraph from the Holy Writings, page 58. The sealing time is very short and will soon be over. Now is the time where the four angels are holding the four winds to make our calling and election sure. Brothers and sisters, the one from the messenger is this. The sealing time is very short. The period that the angels of God and the Holy Spirit is going about sealing men and women for God will be very short and it will be over. Then it is wise for you to take advantage now when the four angels now have not are still holding the four winds because when they release the four winds then times of greater trouble then what you are experiencing now will come. And let me tell you, there's nowhere in the Bible where the Bible says that uh, COVID-19, coronavirus, is what will declare second coming. No. Even the Bible says when we say peace, peace, is when the Lord will come. So these are only signals to tell us that uh, we need to be prepared for the Lord's sitting. Maybe the angel will release the four winds very soon. And much more trouble, pestilences will come on earth. Do you have the seal of God, my viewer, wherever you are? You need to be prepared. But again, I am interested and more concerned with this sealing business. When and why? This is quite important. When and why do you place a seal on a letter? When do you place a seal on a document? You do, we, we do not just uh, place it on any document. We do it and we apply a seal so that we can authenticate that document. So God would want us to seal his people. Just as much as you don't write any letter and place a seal. But there are some documents that you do and you place a seal on them. Likewise. This seal of God is applied so that God can tell who are his people and who are not his people. Similarly, the seal of God will be applied as a mark of identity. It will be applied as a mark of possession, ownership, so that God can tell, this is my, 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 my son, this is my daughter. Have you received a seal? My viewer, wherever you have the seal of God, I want to remind you of what happened in Egypt. You remember the, the Israelites were instructed to, to apply the blood on the doorpost. And the angel passed at night. And wherever there was that mark, there was no plague of the killing of the firstborn son in those houses. But in some other houses where there was no mark, the angels did their business, what they were sent to do in every house in Egypt. Now this seal and the, uh, 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 and the, the blood on the doorpost was done by human beings. That's why you could even tell that your neighbor is doing it. But now this seal is only done by the angels and the Holy Spirit. You may not see it. You may not see this seal. So this mark and the seal of God indicates that the person will enjoy the privileges 
and the protection of God. We will be all looking alike. But heaven will tell, this is our person. That is our person. You need to tell and be prepared. You need to tell whether you have this seal or not. My sister and my brother, prepare for the sealing work of God's time. Therefore, seal of God is applied on the life of a real Christian, true Christian, submissive Christian. It is applied, this seal, unto a consecrated life. This seal will be applied on one washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Are you living with him? And you have a, a personal relationship with him day by day? This seal will be placed onto those experiencing God's renewal, spiritual growth, revival, and reformation. Those are the only men and women who will receive the seal of God. And therefore, there are accordations in order for us to be sealed. And I want to be so specific. These accordations help one to be successful to pass through trying times of trouble. So there are conditions which will qualify you, which you, you need to meet so that you can qualify at that time. These conditions we must meet to make us meet the Lord Jesus Christ in peace at his second coming. One of the conditions is that my brother and my sister, you need to understand our times. When you see crisis, when you see the things happening all around you, pestilences allowed us, form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, hatred, tribalism in churches today, neighbor attacking a neighbor. When you see these things, then you need to tell the time that you are living in. Now is the time to prepare because the seal of God will never be placed upon the forehead of an impure man or woman. Seal of God, remember, is not placed on an individual because he goes to worship on Saturday. Not at all. It is on your settlement into the truth. You may be going to worship on Saturday, but are you settled on truth and the word of God? Do you take time to read the Bible with your family? That is important. God is sealing families, children, young people, parents, grandparents are being sealed. Be prepared for the long sealing. Never will it be placed on the forehead of ambitious and one loving men and women. You may be going to church, but have you committed your life holy and surrendered to the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, God is sealing his people. Regardless of your position, whether you work in church, wherever you are, now this is individual. It is your personal relationship with the Lord. He will seal some pastors, and he may not seal some of them. He will seal some church elders, and not seal others. He will be sealing some church members. He will be sealing some family members, and some of other family members will be left out. How is your life today, even as you see every sign that is telling us to prepare to meet the Lord in the hair? It, uh, this seal will never be placed on forehead of a man or a woman of false tongue or deceitful heart. Those who cannot tell the truth, those who would want to say, to call what is wrong, right, it will never happen. But I want to qualify by saying this. All to be sealed must be without his spot before God. And therefore, understand that this time that we are living in is sealing time. And Jesus is now accepting our prayers and confession of all our faults and sin. Do you have any fault? 
then take it to Jesus, confesses to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the time that the Lord Jesus Christ is pleading in the heavenly kingdom, telling the Father, you can see the, 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 my hands. I died for him. I died for her. Forgive him. Therefore, you need to pray and to confess your sins to the Lord Jesus Christ. Sitting is going on, and it means that God is pardoning transgression and sin. That is the good news. This sealing as it is going on, God is pardoning any sin. Whatever sin you may have committed, you have a time to go to the Lord because he is pardoning sin. Therefore, my viewer, take advantage. Put things right with God because this is the time we need to be prepared for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. It may take five years, it may take 10 years, it can even take 50 years. But the science of the time and the sitting process going on is only preparing God's people for his soon return. And I want to finish with this once. A revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most agent of all our needs. True godliness. My brother, God is sealing his people. Are you prepared for that last seal so that you can now enjoy the protection and you become now known and honed by heaven? Is your charge. Take advantage, my brother and my sister, and prepare for the Lord sealing at this time. Do you have the seal of God? It's end time sealing. Take advantage and put things alight with God. It's my prayer for you, my viewer, wherever you are, in Jesus' name. May God bless us all. And may the Lord now bless you, my three, my viewer, as we prepare day by day for the sealing work of God. And at this time, I want to invite the choristers for the closing song. Amen. Crown that powerful sound. We will sing song number 569, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Seek 
Father and our God in heaven, we thank you, my tree, because you are a God who loves us. That's why you said every kind of warning as you prepare your people for the cross of provision. We have heard your word that, Lord, your angels and the Holy Spirit is in the business of sealing your people. And now every viewer is prepared for this sealing work. We pray that, Lord, as you passed in Egypt, and there was peace in every house that there was a mark that, Lord, you may mark at this, your people at this time in history. So that when the angels and the Holy Spirit pass by, he is able to distinguish your people and to prepare us for your soon return. We pray that, Lord, if there are people among us who are not feeling well, you may heal them because your Holy Spirit has power and, the, uh, and from heaven. You are still healing us even today. We pray for this pestilence, and the pestilence is allowed. We pray for this pandemic of the coronavirus. We pray for the cancers all around and other diseases, that, Lord, you may intervene and bring an end to all these uh, crises that we are in. And above all, you may prepare us for heaven. The world today has become not a place to stay and to live in. We long to come home. Prepare us and seal us for your soon return, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We welcome you to our last music session. We'll crown it with two songs from Nimbo Christa and from the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal. We'll start with song number 170, Limea Andikwa J. Swali Hino. Kasmi. Tafuti mali wala utajiri Nataka kwa ya 
Lakini nipate mokozi Chuo ni mwamu fame ni ami e Yesu Jina langu ya kini Lime andi kwa je Lime andi kwa je Jina langu huko Kitabuni mbinguni Lime handi kwa je Dhambi zangu ni nyingi Ni kama mchanga Lakini damu yako Mokozi ya tosha Kwani ume ahidi Sija ponye kundu Zita kuonye upe Nili vyote luji Lime handi kwa je Jina langu huko Kitabuni mbi song is from the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal, song number 264, Oh for the Flame of Living Fire.
Wow! Don't you sometimes wish that Sabbath could extend all the way to Monday? But well, our all-wise God says in the book of Ecclesiastes, kwa kiswahili kitabu cha mhubiri, that there is time for everything. And sadly, it's time for us to say goodbye. But you don't have to keep that long face because this afternoon we will be back with so many more programs just for you. On behalf of the entire production crew, the speakers, the choristers, the pianist, and the sign language interpreters, we are so delighted that you found time to be with us on this wonderful worship service. Until next time, we ask that you keep a smile, sanitize, stay home, Keep a social distance, but stay connected to Hope Channel Kenya, light in the family. Stay blessed.